Welcome to the Etsy Conversations podcast, featuring inspiring interviews with Etsy shop owners, hosted by Ijama Elazu. Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of the Etsy Conversations podcast. I'm your host, Ijama, and I thank you for joining me for another episode. This week, my guest is Hillary, and she runs the Etsy shop Hillary's Handcrafted, which she started back in 2020 and we'll talk about why she did that i think it's a it's a start uh, a startup story that many of you can relate to hillary thank you so much for being my guest and welcome to the podcast thanks ijama i'm really excited to be talking with you i am too because you did something that i i I find actually really brilliant. And I'll ask you about that in a few minutes. But before we get to it, can you tell us a bit about what you do on Etsy and how you discovered Etsy? My shop is called Hillary's Handcrafted. And I started back in July of 2020 in the midst of the pandemic when I had a little bit of extra time on my hands and wanted a creative outlet. And so I draw pet portraits in watercolor but I did discover that that is a very saturated market. So I focused on turning those pet portraits into earrings, pins, badge reels, um, keychains, different things like that, that I, that I could sell to pet parents. And I can't remember when I had heard of Etsy. It's been many years. Mm -hmm. So I always knew that it existed, but I never really thought about, opening my own shop until recently. So when you opened your shop and, and you were thinking about what to sell, one of the things that um, I, I read, well, when you, when you emailed me was you were entering what you knew was already kind of a saturated, I shouldn't say saturated. I should say there was a lot of competition in the niche that you were going into and so right out of the gate, you niche down by, by offering custom products. Was that easier, do you think, to do or harder? Because I know a lot of new sellers coming in find it hard to, you know, figure out where they fit in. And offering customizations is a good way to do that. But do you think it's the easier or the more difficult path to take? I think that's really hard to say because I don't have experience any other way. So mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, specializing in making the products definitely helped mm -hmm. because there are a lot of artists who are just um, offering plain pet portraits or, or portraits for, for art for the wall. And by changing those into products, I feel like I'm hitting maybe a different market. Um, and in making things for my friends, I kind of figured out what products they might want or what might hit different people. And so I found a lot more success in doing badge reels. So a lot of uh, nurses and therapists who want their pets to be featured on a badge reel. And uh, I've also, starting out... Um, not having as much experience doing pet portraits, mm -hmm. I found that if you're painting them and then shrinking them down, they look really good when they're, say, you know, two by two instead of being blown up on a wall. Mm -hmm. So how did you learn how to make what you make? I originally started out painting doing paint and sip classes and that really helped me gain some confidence in painting yeah. and I started with watercolor maybe about a year or year and a half ago uh, just kind of playing around and I got some different books and things and then started practicing on my uh, friends pets tried some different things that I could possibly sell on Etsy but I do really enjoy the watercolor mm -hmm. And then it just took some trial and error of different mediums of tr figuring out, you know, should I do the watercolor? Does it look better in colored pencils? Mm -hmm. What it is reasonable um, and, you know, quick to do or, 
you know, less time consuming? Could I do this on a scale? What would people pay for it? So it, there definitely was some product development before I posted things on the site. So it sounds like you were very methodical about making your entry onto Etsy. Um, at what point did you feel most ready to list that first product? I definitely did a lot of research. And so I made different varieties of products. I was also able to practice shipping by making things and sending them to my friends who, who lived you know, too far away to deliver. Um, I definitely did research as far as what business licenses I would need and a home occupational permit. And I was on different sites and watch YouTube videos. So I definitely felt like I did my homework. And then in the end, you just kind of have to put it up there and then see how it goes. Yeah. So one of the things that um, I know is you work in the medical field and I think that has given you some insight, not just into the products you offer, like the badge reels for nurses, because I don't think anyone who isn't around that, um, that community would think about that. But also because during the day your mind is on one particular track, um, you needed a creative outlet and, and hence the Etsy shop. When you thought about opening the shop, did you what goals did you set for it other than being a way to express your creativity? Did you have any other goals for your Etsy shop? Well, originally I was taking a step back and taking a look at what my days were. And it was a lot of clinicals, a lot of charting. At the end of the day, I didn't really have anything to show like this is what I did during the day mm. and I always liked having that to be able to create something and be like look what I did mm. and so then I was kind of looking for a way that I could incorporate that maybe into my work life if I could pivot and maybe do something a little bit different but being in the pandemic there wasn't the opportunity to say you know, open a store, start hosting classes or anything like that, which I kind of had in the back of my mind. So the thing that I could start doing is making things in my free time and selling them on Etsy. And that is a really great way to do something part time and to have that creative outlet. And I'm happy with where it is right now, as far as, you know, being something that I can do after work. And, Eventually, maybe once the pandemic is is hopefully done, um, branching out into some of those other creative endeavors that I that I've been having in the back of my mind. But for now, doing the Etsy has has really been a really great experience in making me be creative. And, you know, I may not make the time for doing the art if I hadn't if I had didn't have orders. And yeah. so once I start doing it, then I'm like, this is great. And I lose myself in it, but it's getting that oomph to sit down and actually do it yeah. that the Etsy shop has really helped with. Yeah. I like that. Um, do you remember how long it took before you got your first sale? I actually have really supportive family. So mm -hmm. I had some orders right away and also one of my friends was one of my best customer and ordered things for her friends for, for a few weeks as I first started. Mm -hmm. And then I think my first sale from someone I didn't know was maybe a month in. And so I opened in July and I think by about September I was getting two to four sales a week and then Christmas hit and it was crazy. Oh, yeah. Did you were you expecting the Christmas rush or did you think that because your your shop was relatively new, it might not hit? I did not expect it at all, <laughs> but I think I had about 60 sales going into the Christmas season. And between Thanksgiving and Christmas, I doubled that. So I think I had 60 more sales wow. then. 
which was definitely, I was like, I don't know if I can keep up with this if it, if it stays like this, but it was a really good experience, but I'm also glad that it's not like that all the all time. All the time, right. Yes. What, what did you find yourself having to do differently just to keep up during that time? I had a lot of spreadsheets. Mm. So I had, um, you know, the customer's name, what they ordered, if I had it, you know, printed out, painted, scanned for approval, mm. ready to ship out. I had lots of little check marks where things were in the process. Um, and then I, and I worked every night and it was like, I know they're not due yet, but if I keep, unless I keep up on them, they're just going to keep piling up. So I definitely mm-hmm. worked every day and I ended up raising my prices a little bit during that time yeah. um, because it got to the point where I'm like, oh no, I can't keep up. Um, Did you find that I, that slowed things down or, or no? Not really. That's great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then it makes each each product you make even more worth the time the fact that you were able to charge more and 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 still put in the same amount of effort exactly and that's a little bit what I've done with my prices is I try and take an account um you know how much the materials cost what it costs to ship it and how much time that it takes <sighs> and so i try to set my prices at a place where it will make it feel worth it to do yeah. especially when i'm doing it after work or something like that yes and that brings to mind another another situation that i think as as a seller who focuses purely on custom orders um you you probably have to deal with that's different from someone who doesn't is inventory I assume you can't really keep any on hand because everybody's pet is going to be different. And so every every product is made from scratch. And, and I do offer kind of a limited number of different things. So everything requires really similar supplies as far as, you know, watercolor paint papers, mm-hmm. um, what I'm printing on. And so I actually feel like it's better for inventory because I'm making things to order. So I don't have a lot of inventory that's sitting on my shelf yeah. waiting to be sold. So in that in that sense, I think it makes it easier um, in, in a way because I have tried to start selling some more non-custom items Mm -hmm. but it's more difficult to determine you know what do people want what will they buy how much of something do I make what if I make a whole bunch and then it doesn't sell Mm -hmm. then what do I do with it so there's really I like doing the custom things and and people really like it and I really like making something specifically for someone that I know they're going to love rather than something generic yeah it's a version of what I would call, I, I don't know if, you, if you're if you familiar with print on demand. but Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Except this in, the, in, in your case, everything is handled in-house uh, by you. But that model really works because there's a lot less waste. I can't tell you how many, because I have a, a shop where I sell vintage items and I can't tell you how much stuff is sitting around just waiting for the perfect owner. Right. And that's a downside of of selling in that market is, you know, you know it will sell one day, well, hopefully, but you have to hold on to it until it does. And, and, right. And that does create its own problems. Exactly. So um, you talked about how you determine pricing and and that makes sense. Do you see yourself scaling in the future and and how do you think you're going to or, or what do you think would be the most ideal way for you to scale your business? I am working on that in a way as far as um, trying to update my photos 
and my descriptions working on SEO, trying to get some more traction through Etsy. Uh, I am currently working on um, gift boxes, which include multiple different items featuring the same pet portrait. Mm. Uh, and then I'm also considering branching out into some more non-custom items if I can and just offering the selections that I have because the not, the custom items do take a long time. Mm -hmm. It would be nice to have a few other things that, that would be easier to pack and send without having to sit down and make them. Yeah. Are there any tools that you're using to, to do research to find out what might be good products to keep on hand, like to carry that are non-custom or are you going based on what your customers have requested in the past and, and just from your own experience that way? For some things I think of what would I like or mm -hmm. what do I think my target market would like? And then I will look on Etsy and see if other people are selling it um, how many people seem to be buying, if I can tell from reviews, um, what their prices are. Like I'm, I'm definitely looking at, at trying to make cards or art prints and then trying to figure out how other sellers are, are pricing those and then factoring in shipping, especially yeah. when, when sellers are selling just one card, how that works. Yeah. Um, so I don't have anything official as far as, identifying what people would want on my site which is difficult for like I said do I make a whole bunch of something or you know then you make one is it going to sell and then that sells and then you make a bunch and then nobody else wants them yes. it's it's really definitely a challenge to yeah. to try and figure out that yeah um when it comes to handling customers and and um, customer service have you found and I, I I guess I shouldn't say have you found because you've always only offered custom products but have you had to deal with any customers that weren't happy with the final product or thought it wasn't a a good enough representation of their of their pet and how did you deal with that so I always paint the portrait and then I send it to to the customer for approval. So most of the time they're happy. Sometimes it requires some tweaks and sometimes mm -hmm. I, I do an, another painting. But those are pretty few and far between. But I feel like having that approval definitely makes sure that the customers are happy in the end. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's a good a good um check that you have in your system so that right at the end, yeah and do you think that that makes it easier like do you find it's easier then for customers to come back and leave feedback because I don't if, don't know if you know but you know one of the hard things sellers um, have to face is customers not leaving feedback and um, and I I sense that the more customization or personalization one offers the easier it might be to solicit feedback have you found that most of or a higher percentage of your customers do end up leaving feedback after they're done with the with the process I do think I have a good percentage that do leave feedback and I think it is due to that custom customization and also that that contact you have with the seller makes you realize that there's a, a person on the other end. It's yeah. it's definitely a lot different than, you know, ordering something, have it sent and being like, yep, this is what I ordered. Yeah. So I, I do, I think at, at one point I was getting feedback on about one out of three, three That's products, excellent. which I thought was, yeah definitely helps get your foot in the door when when people are leaving positive reviews yeah yeah that's excellent because the struggle is really real right oh i'm sure <laughs> oh. and 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 being on a platform where uh people take that into account in their purchasing decision you know it it really makes a difference to get those 
Right, especially as a new shop, it, having a few people verify that they ordered and it was a good experience yeah. definitely helps for the future. Yeah. How about promoting your store? What do you do, if anything, in the way of driving traffic to your Etsy shop? I mostly tried to set up my SEA SEO so that Etsy drives a lot of my traffic. I do have an Instagram which is linked to my Facebook and I have a hard time posting. I've never <laughs> been one for social media so it doesn't come naturally to me to mm -hmm. take pictures to post on social media. So I do have an Instagram. I do try to post. Um, my following is pretty small right now. Um, and I, I do try to learn it every once in a while. And I have a friend who's been trying to set up my Instagram. Oh, you need to do this. You need to do this. And then I think, gosh, how much time does Instagram think that I have? <laughs> so um, I go through spurts where I really try to post or I really try to schedule. But it's it's definitely one of those things that I, I don't really enjoy doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I hear you. It's 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 difficult sometimes to keep up you know especially with all the different platforms but I think you know one one good thing that you did is linking Instagram and Facebook now that they are um but yeah social media is its own whole different beast yes <laughs> and if I have something I've done that I'm excited to post about I I definitely will but to try and think of something every day to put on there is is a struggle but yeah. every once in a while i'll have something that i'm really proud of or or i'll post a sale on there or something like that yeah any plans for because you mentioned seo and, and um sometimes what really helps seo off of etsy to drive it back to drive um traffic back to your site is having a website or somewhere where you blog is that on the horizon for Hillary's Handcrafted any time in the future? Not right now. I've thought about it, but since Etsy drives most of my traffic and um, I haven't been able to successfully drive a lot of traffic through my Instagram, I feel like I'll let Etsy do the work for now. Yeah. Have you tried the ads and, and did those work or, or are you... Um, are you signed up or well, not signed up, but, you know, allowing the offsite ads to work for you as well? I haven't done ads yet. I know that I was signed up briefly for the offsite ads mm -hmm. and I did get a sale of something because I had tried to originally do um, like pet breed items. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that there are a lot of pet breeds. And <laughs> so I would have a lot of things like waiting for their owner but someone did buy one and I had my prices set pretty low since it was a non-custom item and I, mm. by the time Etsy took out their fees I was like well that wasn't really worth it but at least it's gone and someone can enjoy it yeah yes I, I yeah I know and I think one of the things that we overlook with the fees uh, with with Etsy are the fees um and budgeting that into into our pricing and before one of the things I, I just want to quickly say recently like I watch a lot of YouTube videos because I'm trying to learn stuff and I hear a lot of people say oh it's easy enough to just try on Etsy it's just 20 cents yes that's to list it but when it's so when when it sells, what I think people forget to take into account are the fees. You know, there's the tr the five percent transaction fee, and then if you charge shipping, there's that. There's another five percent, and then there's um a payment processing fee, and I can't remember how much it how much it is. But um, I think sometimes we overlook that, and it cuts into people's profits. Did you know that going in or was that something you figured out later on and then had to go back and retool? No, I had kind of a spreadsheet to figure out how much would it cost me to list it? How much do the materials cost per mm -hmm. product? Mm 
-hmm. How much are those Etsy fees? How much is my packaging? How much is my shipping? Yeah. So that I could calculate that all out to see what the actual profit would be per mm -hmm. item. Um, and so I have that factored in, but as far as the offsite ads, when they're taking another 12% mm -hmm. or whatever, I mean, that's, that's a big, a big chunk a if chunk. you yeah. haven't factor that in and if you're not getting a lot of sales that way do you really factor an extra 10 percent in just in case yeah. yeah i yeah i i when i sat down to do the numbers i was actually really shocked i thought okay this is is quite a bit well and i think shipping too is it can be really tricky to factor in the shipping because I think a lot of people are used to the free shipping and don't realize how much shipping actually costs. Mm -hmm. And I'm really lucky that my products are small, mm -hmm. but like I said, considering shipping cards, let's say someone buys one card, how much can you charge to accommodate that, you know, $3 shipping charge? Yeah. So it it can be really tricky in that way of trying to get people to realize how much shipping costs and how to either factor that into your products or add it on later. Yeah. Now, when you get an idea for a new product line that you want to offer, typically, how long does it take for you from getting the concept of it to actually creating it, executing it, and having it available in your store for sale? If it is something that is very similar to what I'm offering already, like once I decided to start offering the badge reels, it's the same process that I've done for the rest of the things. I just need to order the badge reels. And so, so those kinds of products are really quick for me to make and list. Mm -hmm. But if it's something new, like I started offering um, pet memorial sun catchers. And mm -hmm. so that took a little bit of time to source the beads, try to find, and especially with the pandemic and I live in, in a smaller town, there aren't stores where I can really go in and look for exactly what I want. Mm -hmm. So I have to do a lot of research online to figure out what should I purchase? How much is it going to cost? How do I ship it? What kind of box do I need? And so depending on, you know, how busy I might be with work or orders or how motivated I am, it could take a few weeks. It could take a few months from having an idea of something that I want to do because I definitely function better with deadlines. Mm. And so if it's something that I have an idea for, I may start working on it, but to actually like finish it, have everything done, post it and list it, it, it could be a little bit. Yeah. Okay. And do you find, and I just remembered I wanted to ask this, do you find that you, or or how how, how do you organize all your Etsy related activities? Um, dividing time between making admin admin stuff and um, and and just still getting to be creative. I would say most of my time is spent making for orders because my my offerings are pretty few and it's all custom so i don't need to be listing products regularly um and so people order off of the of what i have already um depending on how much time I'm wanting to do on Instagram, that could take a little bit of time if I'm really motivated. Um, and then, you know, communicating with customers, maybe a quarter of the time and then three quarters of the time making. Okay. In your time so far selling on Etsy, have you run into any problems that you didn't anticipate and how did you figure out how to get past them? And I ask this for the benefit of, of someone listening who, who might maybe run into a similar issue and, and to know how to 
figure that out or overcome that? I feel like Etsy is pretty intuitive and it has worked really well. I haven't really run into anything that I couldn't figure out. And generally a Google search will tell you anything <laughs> that you want to know. Yes. That's true. So, so far selling on Etsy, what's one thing about the platform that you really like? And then also, are there any features that don't currently exist that you might like to see one day? I think that it's very easy to set up listings. Um, and so it just walks you through it. You put up your pictures, you put up your description, you put up your titles and tags and Etsy really works for you to get that traffic to your shop. As far as things that I wish they had would be more options for personalization. So I had offered Christmas ornaments over the Christmas season and there were different customization options that I had for them and there weren't enough boxes. So, you know, there, I wish there were drop down bo boxes where they could, you know, I want this color ribbon. I want this color stain and oh, you know, nice. this is what I want it to say. Mm -hmm. And I'm running into the same problem with offering gift packages where I have say five or six different kinds of items and if I want to list it as a gift box and you want to order a four item gift box how is it that you indicate which four items that you want um, there there isn't really like okay I'm picking four items and now there's four drop down boxes where they're like I want a keychain a pin some earrings and a badge reel mm -hmm. So, so in that sense, it becomes a little bit trickier in having to, you know, have them type out what they want mm -hmm. because trying to do a variation of every combination of things would get really confusing. Yeah. So how do you handle that now? Do you deal, do you deal with it all in the messaging system and do you just create a, a custom listing so that then everything move, moves into messaging back and forth with the customer if, if they're going to do something like that? In that case, like with the Christmas ornaments um, and any of my products, really, they have to send me a photo of their pet in the Etsy messaging anyway. So it's pretty easy to communicate in that sense if they haven't answered the question that I need answered, like what color bow do you want? Uh, I also put, you know, if you don't tell me, then this is the default. Oh, yeah. Um, that helps. And then I have offered custom signs and people reach out to me directly. And and that's when I would set up a custom listing of, of this is what you want and this is what you want it to say and this is what it will look like. Okay. And do you use the feature where you can set up the listing directly from? the Etsy Convo messaging system? Yes. Okay. I've never used that before. Is it easy to do? It's very easy. Oh. And then I just have a generic um, private listing uh, picture that I can insert in there. And then I just type out what we've talked about in our message. Okay. And so yeah, then and that's worked out. When you do that, does it then become a listing in your in your shop or it just stays in the messaging system? I believe it just stays in the messaging system. Okay. And then it says that Etsy does not charge you the 20 cents until the person purchases it. Oh, okay. So you don't have to pay the 20 cent listing fee if the person doesn't end up purchasing it. Oh, okay. So within the, sorry, I'm so curious about this because I've never <laughs> used it. So then with, within the system, when you set that up, does it look inside of the messaging system like a regular listing would look and then it has a, a, a button to pay or to, to purchase the, the listing? You know, I don't remember. I know that it sends like the little picture in the message and then they can mm -hmm. click on it mm -hmm. um, to purchase it. 
I don't remember any of the specifics, and I don't know what it looks like on their end. Uh, yeah. Interesting. I, I thought that was a good addition when they put it in, um, but I've never had any cause to use it, so I've always just been curious how it works. It is very convenient, especially then you don't have to list it with everything else. Yeah. It doesn't show up for anyone else. It just goes straight in the message, so there's no confusion. Yeah. Hillary, what advice would you have for someone who is just at the beginning of their Etsy journey and um, still trying to figure things out on the platform? What would you tell that person? I would say definitely do some homework. So practice what you're making. See how long it takes. See if it's something you think you would enjoy making a lot of and mm. spending a lot of time doing. How much does it cost for supplies? What kind of prices do you think you could charge? Um, definitely figure out what kinds of business licenses you need because it is it is a business. Mm -hmm. And keep track of your expenses from the beginning because you can subtract those at the end. And then um, you may never feel ready, but eventually you just have to <laughs> go with your gut and see what happens. Yeah. Do you use a particular accounting system or are you a spreadsheet spreadsheet type of person? Uh, since I'm just such a small scale, then, then a Google Sheets works just fine for me. Okay. What's something that you feel is working really well for you right now in your Etsy selling ventures? I think like we talked about before, offering the custom items and having that connection with the customer through the messaging yeah. process, it really helps make that connection and it helps with the reviews also. Yeah. Are there any resources or tools that you find help you just function better and run your business more easily? I don't use anything in particular um so no i i wouldn't have anything to recommend google sheets google sheets yes <laughs> <laughs> i have a binder with receipts good old-fashioned binders yeah. and google sheets <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> now is there any etsy shop that you would like to just send some love to an etsy shop shout out maybe another seller that you particularly enjoy or has been helpful to you along the way? I would say if a small Etsy shop has something that you want, it's always good to take a chance on them because they will mm -hmm. be so excited to get their first sales <laughs> and, and definitely take a chance because there are a lot of people who are trying to break in and it's, it takes a few sales before they can really build up a presence. Yeah. So take a chance one of those smaller newer shops yes i yeah i i can only imagine how much it makes a new seller's day to get that first i call it the stranger sale like, oh yes it's not somebody you know it's like somebody out there in the world who really really wants what you have i've even i've even trained my husband he'll come out you got a cha-ching <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yes, that's the best. What's the best way people can connect with you if they want to get in touch? Maybe order a custom pet uh, badge or keychain or something that you offer. What's the best way for people to connect with you? You can always visit my shop at Hillary's Handcrafted. And you can visit me on my Instagram or Facebook, which is at Hillary's Handcrafted. Okay, great. And I will have links to everywhere that you can connect with Hillary um, in the show notes for this episode. So you can reach out and um, see what she's up to. If you know someone who has pets or you do, order some custom pet gifts um, for them. Hillary, thank you so much for taking time out. Thank you for being patient too earlier with our technical issues. I do appreciate you taking the time out to do this. Well, thank you, Ujama. It was great talking with you. Same here. 
And I thank you for listening to this episode of the podcast. Um, if you would like to connect with me, you can go to convome.com, use the contact form there or the Be My Guest form if you would like to be on the podcast. I am also on Instagram at Etsy Conversations. And I will be back with another episode next week. Thank you for listening. You can subscribe to the podcast in iTunes. And while you're there, please leave a review too. Visit ConvoMe.com to leave a comment or feedback on this episode. <laughs>